Hello everyone, this is Sponge Thomas Einstein Pants, founder of this YouTube channel. For more information about me, don't forget to check out SDE Parks and SDE Planes, which are my two other YouTube channels, Chance the Green Express, my TikTok channel, and the SDEP Instagram account. Enjoy the show! Dear Christopher, here is your friend Thomas the Tank Engine. He wanted to come out of his station yard and see the world. These stories tell you how he did it. I hope you will like them because you helped me to make them. Your loving daddy. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers streams, and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine, and docks where the visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas! Hello, Thomas! Hello, everybody! Welcome to the island of Sodor. Every afternoon, Thomas the Tank Engine puffs along his branch line with Annie and Clarabelle. First, they pass the water mill. Then they come to a big farm. Then they can see a bridge with a village nestled either side of it. This is a special place. Whenever children hear Thomas coming along, they stand on the bridge waving until he is out of sight. One day, Thomas was running late. He had stopped at a signal before the bridge to talk to some new children. Percy, the small engine, was waiting too. Hurry up, Thomas, called Percy when the signal dropped. If you're late, Sir Topham Hat might get a new engine to replace you. He would never do that, thought Thomas, but he was worried. Next day, Thomas hurried along the line. Just ahead was the goods yard. There, on the platform, was an inspector waving a red flag. Next, Thomas saw some children. They were waving too. Something must be wrong, thought Thomas. This station is for goods, not passengers. Help, Thomas, help! 
We're glad to see you, called the children. Please will you take us home? The station master explained to Thomas's driver that the school bus had broken down and all the parents would be worried if the children were late. Thomas waited as the children walked down from the bridge. Then he took the children to the next station where Bertie was waiting to take them home. When Thomas finished his journey, he was very late. He was worried that Sir Topham Hatt might be cross with them. I won't, Thomas, puffed Percy to James. He's been light one time too many. He'll be in trouble now. But next morning when Thomas picked up his passengers, Sir Topham Hatt was nowhere to be seen. Thank goodness, sighed Thomas. Thomas knows every part of his branch line. Just ahead, there was a stretch where the hot sun had bent the rails on the track. Careful, Thomas, called his driver, but it was too late. That's done it, said his driver. We shan't get any further today. But what about my passengers, asked Thomas. Don't worry, they'll be looked after, replied his driver. While workmen repaired the line, Thomas had to shunt freight cars in the yard. Bertie came to see him. I understand you need my help again. Yes, Bertie, replied Thomas sadly. I can't run without my rails. Bertie set off to collect Thomas's passengers. Hello, Bertie, they said. We're glad you're here. Bertie drove along the road that runs by the railway. He stopped at each station along the line. Sometimes he stopped between stations to let people off closer to their homes. Thomas felt miserable. I've lost my passengers to Bertie. They'll like him better than me. Sir Topham had arrived. Your branch line is repaired. I'm going to change your timetable so that you and Betsy can work together more. When Thomas reached the station, there to his relief were all his passengers. Bertie is a good bus, but we missed our train rides with you, they said. Later, Thomas spoke to Bertie. Thank you for looking after my passengers. That's all right, Thomas. I like to make new friends, but I'm glad to share them with you. You're a good friend indeed, replied Thomas, and always will be. Thomas the tank engine wouldn't stop being a nuisance. Night after night, he kept the other engines awake. I'm tired of pushing coaches. I want to see the world. The other engines didn't take much notice, for Thomas was a little engine with a long tongue. But one night, Edward came to the shed. He was a kind little engine and felt sorry for Thomas. I've got some freight cars to take home tomorrow. If you take them instead of me, I'll push coaches in the yard. Thank you, said Thomas. That would be nice. Next morning, Edward and Thomas asked their drivers, and when they said yes, Thomas ran off happily to find freight cars. Now the freight cars were silly and noisy. They talk a lot and don't attend to what they are doing. And I'm sorry to say that they play tricks on an engine who is not used to them. Edward knew all about the freight cars. He warned Thomas to be careful, 
but Thomas was too excited to listen. The shunter fastened the coupling, and when the signal dropped, Thomas was ready. The conductor blew his whistle. Beep, beep, answered Thomas, and started off. But the freight cars weren't ready. Oh, oh, they screamed. Wait, Thomas, wait. But Thomas wouldn't wait. Come on, come on, he puffed. All right, don't fuss, all right, don't fuss, grumbled the cars. Thomas began going faster and faster. Whee! He whistled as he rushed through Henry's tunnel. Hurry, hurry, called Thomas. He was feeling very proud of himself, but the cars grew crosser and crosser. At last, Thomas slowed down as he came to Gordon's Hill. Steady now, steady, warned the driver, and look out for the train. He began to put on his brakes. We're stopping, we're stopping, called Thomas. No, 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 answered the cars, bumping them to each other. Go on, go on! Before the driver could stop them, they had pushed Thomas down the hill and were rattling and laughing behind them. Poor Thomas tried hard to stop them from making him go too fast. Stop pushing, stop pushing, he hissed, but the cars took no notice. Go on, go on, they giggled in their silly way. There's the station. Oh dear, what shall I do? cried Thomas. They rattled straight through and swerved into the goods yard. Thomas shut his eyes. I must stop! When he opened his eyes, he saw he had stopped just in front of the buffers. There watching him was Sir Topham Hat. What are you doing here, Thomas? he asked. I brought Edward's freight cars, Thomas answered. Why did you come so fast? I didn't mean to. I was pushed, said Thomas. You got a lot to learn about freight cars, Thomas. After pushing them about here for a few weeks, you'll know almost as much about them as Edward. Then you'll be a really useful engine. Thomas the Tank Engine has worked his branch line for many years and knows it very well. You know just where to stop, Thomas laughed his driver. You can almost manage it without me. Thomas had become conceited. He didn't realize his driver was joking. Later, he boasted to the others. Driver says I don't need him now. Don't be so daft, snorted Percy. I never go without my driver, said Toby earnestly. I'd be frightened. Puh, boasted Thomas. I'm not scared. You never dare. I would then. You'll see. The next day, the fire lighter came. Thomas drowsed comfortably as the warmth spread into his boiler. Percy and Toby were still asleep. 
Thomas suddenly remembered. Silly stick in the muds, he chuckled. I'll show them. Driver says I can manage without him. I'll just go out, then I'll stop and wheesh. That'll make them jump. Thomas thought he was being clever, and really he was only moving because a careless cleaner had meddled with his controls. He soon found his mistake. He tried to wheesh, but he couldn't. He tried to stop, but he couldn't. He just kept rolling along. He didn't dare look at what was coming next. There was the station master's house. The station master was about to have breakfast. Horrors, cried Thomas, and shut his eyes. The house rocked. Broken glass tinkled. Plaster was everywhere. Thomas had collected a bush on his travels. He peered into the room through its leaves. He couldn't speak. The station master was furious. His wife picked up her plate. You miserable engine, she scolded. Just look what you've done to our breakfast. Now I shall have to cook some more. She banged the door. More plaster fell. This time it fell on Thomas. Thomas felt depressed. Workmen propped up the house with strong poles and laid rails through the garden. Then, the Scottish twin engines Donald and Douglas arrived. Dina fish, fish, you said, said Thomas. Thomas. We'll soon have you back on the rails, they laughed. Donald and Douglas, puffing hard, managed to haul Thomas back to safety. Bits of fencing, the bush, and a broken window frame festooned his front which was badly twisted. The twins laughed and left him. Thomas was in disgrace. There was worse to come. You're in a lot of trouble, Thomas. Thomas's voice was muffled behind his bush. You must go to the works and have your front mended. It will be a long job. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, a diesel rail car will do your work. <laughs> Thomas spluttered. Yes, Thomas. Diesels always stay in their sheds till they are wanted. Diesels never gallivant off to breakfast in station master's houses. Thomas the tank engine was grumbling to the other engines. I spent my time pulling coaches about, ready for you to take out on journeys. The other engines laughed. Why can't I pull passenger trains too? You're too impatient, they said. You'd be sure to leave something behind. Rubbish, said Thomas. I'll show you. One night, he and Henry were alone. Henry was ill. The men worked hard but he didn't get better. He felt just as bad next morning. Henry usually pulled the first train, and Thomas had to get his coaches ready. If Henry is ill, he thought, perhaps I shall pull his train. Thomas ran off to find the coaches. Come along, come along, he fussed. There's plenty of time, there's plenty of time, they grumbled. Thomas took them to the platform and wanted to run around in front at once. But his driver wouldn't let him. Don't be impatient, Thomas. Thomas waited and waited. 
the people got in. The conductor and station master walked up and down. The porter banged the doors, and still Henry didn't come. Thomas got more and more excited. Sir Topham Hatt came to see what was the matter, and the conductor and station master told him about Henry. Find another engine, he ordered. There's, There's only Thomas, Thomas, they said. You'll have to do it then, Thomas. Be quick now. So Thomas ran round to the front and back down on the coaches, ready to start. Let's not be impatient, said his driver. We'll wait till everything is ready. But Thomas was too excited to listen. What happened then, no one knows. Perhaps they forgot to couple Thomas to the train, or perhaps the driver pulled the lever by mistake. Anyhow, Thomas started without his coaches. As he passed the signal tower, men waved and shouted, but he didn't stop. They're waving because I'm such a splendid engine, he thought importantly. Henry says it's hard to pull trains, but I think it's easy. Hurry, 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 he puffed, pretending to be like Gorton. People had never seen me pulling a train before. It's nice of them to wave, and he whistled. Beep, beep, thank you. Then he came to a signal at danger. Father, he thought, I must stop, and I was going so nicely too. What a nuisance signals are. He blew an angry peep, peep on his whistle. The signal man ran up. Hello, Thomas, he said. What are you doing here? I'm pulling a train, said Thomas. Can't you see? Where are your coaches then? Thomas looked back. Why, bless me, he said, if we haven't left them behind. Yes, said the signalman. You better go quickly and fetch them. Poor Thomas was so sad he nearly cried. Cheer up, said his driver. Let's go back quickly and try again. At the station, all the passengers were talking at once. They were telling Sir Topham Hatt what a bad railway it was. But when Thomas came back, they saw how sad he was and couldn't be cross. He was coupled to the train, and this time he really pulled it. Afterwards, the other engines laughed at Thomas and said, Look, there's Thomas, who wanted to pull the train, but forgot about the coaches. But Thomas had already learned not to make the same mistake again. Thomas the tank engine was feeling very happy. His blue coat shone in the sun, he was right on time, and all around his branch line the countryside seemed prettier than ever before. Beep beep! Good morning, Percy, he whistled. My branch is the pride of the line, wouldn't you agree? Uh, yes, Thomas, of course, but... But what, Percy? Out with it. Well, there's another engine with the famous branch line, too. Who? Where? His name's Stepney. He's far away, but Sir Topham Hatt says he may visit us. When? Oh, someday. And Percy hurried away. Meanwhile, Stepney puffed steadily along his line. It runs through fields in the forest, but isn't very long, and that made him feel a little sad. Later, he saw Rusty, the little diesel had helped save Stepney from scrap. Everyone's been so kind, but my railway is so short, 
that I do miss a good long run. I think you should tell Driver too, replied Rusty. I'm sure he'll understand. Stepney soon discovered that indeed he did. Be nice, Stepney. I feel just the same way. That evening, he had exciting news. Guess what, Stepney? Sir Topham Hatt has invited us to visit the other engines on his railway. The manager agreed. It'll be a really long run to get there. Oh, thank you, sighed Stepney. They set off the next morning. By now, all the other engines were talking about Stepney. He runs a famous branch line. Did you know that? said Percy. Thomas was feeling a little jealous. Huh. It may be famous, but my branch is the first on the line. Everyone knows that too. And he huffed away to fetch his coaches. Look, squeaked Percy. Why have they all come? There's no train yet. But Percy was wrong. The signal dropped and from far away an engine whistled. Here he comes, yelled Douglas. Stepney puffed proudly through the junction. All the engines were pleased to see him. I hope you'll meet Thomas too, said Edward. You both have branch lines to be proud of. Then, Stepney set off to help duck shunt coaches in the yards, and they worked happily together all afternoon. At last, Thomas arrived. Sorry, can't talk. It's time for my last branch line train. Mustn't be late. He was hardly out of sight when the engines heard shouting at the station. Moments later came the alarm. Stop all trains! The signalman answered the telephone. A special, is it? I see. Thomas was impatient. Why are we waiting? My passengers are being delayed. Sorry, Thomas, said his driver. We've been shunted to allow another train to pass. Soon, they heard an unfamiliar puffing sound. There was Stepney with his headlamp swinging and whistle blowing. He gathered speed and disappeared. Well, bust my boiler, said Thomas the tank engine. Next morning, he was still fuming. Shunted, and on my own branch too. It's a disgrace. I'm sorry, said Stepney. I was a special. Why? An important passenger arrived just as you left. He ordered a special train and Duck let me take it. We had a splendid run, but... But, finished Thomas, it can make an engine nervous not to know the line. Exactly, said Stepney. You're such an expert. Thomas felt much better, he couldn't be cross anymore, and began telling Stepney all about his branch line.
There are times to be brave and times to be strong When you're lost and you're all alone You might be somewhere strange and dark But long to be safe at home Thomas knows what must be done He knows and what is more He's the leader Number one, such a brave little engine for sure. Well, you might be lost on a foggy night, stuck fast on a snowy day. It's times like that you feel afraid. So that is the time to say, Thomas knows what must be done. He knows it. What is more, he's the leader, number one, such a brave little engine for sure. Thomas knows what must be done, he knows and what is more, he's the leader, number one, such a brave little engine, brave little engine. Thomas knows what must be done, he knows and what is more. He's the leader, number one, such a brave little engine for sure. Thomas knows what must be done, he knows and what is more. He's the leader, number one. Such a brave little engine, brave little engine, brave little engine for sure. He's a really useful engine, you know. All the other engines, they'll tell you so. He huffs and puffs and whistles, rushing to and fro. He's the really useful engine we adore. He's the one. He's the one. He's the really useful engine that we adore. He's the one. He's the number one, Thomas the Tank Engine! He's a really useful engine, you know. Cause the fat controller, he told him so. Now he's got a branch line to call his very own. He's the really useful engine we adore. He's the one. He's the one. He's the really useful engine that we adore. He's the one. He's the number one. Thomas the Tank Engine. Little Blue Train. He's always there whenever you need a hand. If you need help with the situation, who comes into mind? He's the one. He's the one. He's the really useful engine that we adore. He's the 
one. He's the number one. Thomas the Tank Engine. He's a really useful engine, you know. Maybe little, but he's never slow. Stand back in amazement, just you watch him go. He's the really useful engine we adore. He's the one, he's the one. He's the really useful engine that we adore. He's the one, he's the number one. A lesson that's worth learning, one you never should forget. It's the art of friendly rivalry. It's not always about winning, you must learn that from the start. Enjoy yourself, remember what counts is taking part. Let's, Let's have a race, have a race, have a race. Let's see who is the quickest. Who can be the fastest? On your marks, now get set, go! Let's hit the pace, hit the pace, hit the pace. Let's see if you can catch me. Let's see if you can match me. So, let's have a race, have a race. Thomas challenged Bertie to a friendly race one day. The driver said get ready, but be careful on the way. The friends lined up together, enjoying the fun. The station master called out, are you ready to begin? Let's have a race, have a race, have a race. Let's see who is the quickest, who can be the fastest. On your marks, now get set, go! The pace is the pace, let's see if you can catch me, let's see if you can match me, so, let's have a race, have a race. Birdie Bus was winning, he sped along the way, Thomas tried so hard, to catch up on the way Eventually he passed him And Bertie had to say To pass you on that hill, Thomas On his wings like an aeroplane Let's, Let's have a race, have a race, have a race Let's see who is the quickest Who can be the fastest On your marks, now get set, go! Let's hit the pace, hit the pace, hit the pace Let's see if you can catch me Let's see if you can match me So Let's have a race, have a race Let's have a race, have a race, have a race Let's see who is the quickest Who can be the fastest Ready, set, go Let's hit the pace, hit the pace, hit the pace Let's see if you can catch me Let's see if you can match me So Let's have a race, have a race Let's have a race, let's have a race, right
It's Thomas the Tank Engine. Hip, 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 hooray. Chug a chug a chug 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 He rides along the way And when you hear that whistle It can only be one train Our favorite little engine Thomas is his name Thomas the Tank Engine Rolling along All of his friends will be coming along Thomas, we love you. He's a really useful engine with a heart that's big and strong. He chug a chug a chug chug's working hard, helping everyone. Thomas, he has lots of friends and you can be one too. Just clap, clap, clap and sing along. Thomas, we love you. Thomas, the tank engine rolling along. All of his friends will be coming along. Thomas, we love you. There's Gordon and Henry, Edward, James, and Toby, Annie and Clarabelle. Don't forget Percy, Terrence and Bertie, Diesel, Duck, and Daisy. Lots more friends for you. always up to mischief, that cheeky little train. He chugga chugga chuff chuffs everywhere, he's always playing games. The fat controller sculpts him, but loves him just the same. Our favorite little engine, Thomas is his name. Thomas the tank engine rolling along. All of his friends will be coming along. Thomas, we love you. Thomas, the tank engine rolling along. All of his friends will be coming along. Thomas, we love you. Thomas, we love you. Thomas, we love you.